are in listen only mode. Good morning and welcome to the Maricopa County Board of Supervisors formal meeting. Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Yes, good morning, Chairman, Supervisors. Supervisor Gates. Here. Supervisor Hickman. Here. Supervisor Gallardo. Here. And Chairman Sellers. Here. Thank you. Supervisor Hickman, would you please introduce your guest that will lead us today in the invocation and pledge? I would love to, and there he is, popping up on the screen. Would everybody um, please stand? Well, I don't get to I don't get to introduce him. <laughs> I'll introduce you next after after this, RJ. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, thank you for inviting me here. Supervisor Hickman, thank you for inviting me. I'm honored to be here. Um, let me go ahead and start with the invocation. Uh, now, if you so choose, please bow your heads for a moment of reflection and prayer. Loving Father and creator of our natural world, we come to you today deeply grateful for your creation. As we look around us, we are in awe of the splendor and majesty of all that you have made. The natural wonders around us demonstrate your greatness. The vast expanse of the sky, the mountains, lakes, streams, and vibrant Sonoran desert speak of your wise design. You have given us the beauty of a rainbow and the scent of the creosote bush after a rain, the joy of watching an eagle soar through the sky or a cactus wren playfully chirping atop a giant saguaro. Words cannot adequately express the magnificence of all you have created. May we show our love and reverence by caring for this special place and let us renew our spirit as we reconnect with the beauty you have provided. We humbly give you praise and thanks. Amen. 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 And now if you could join me in the pledge I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, okay. Mr. Chairman. Now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, before we lose RJ, um, you know, RJ has been the director of the parks for more than 14 years. So. Um, you know, when I first met RJ, I mean, you can tell the, the, the love for, for his job and the love for the parks, Maricopa County Park System is just an absolute shining star uh, in the county portfolio. And really that quality of life uh, that we all enjoy here, you can, when you walk into a park, you can, you can just feel it. And I'm very proud to represent the parks. And I know that RJ is, the county preserves and invests in approximately 120,000 acres of open space, including the Maricopa Trail connecting the be our beautiful parks. Uh, this is the eighth year of county parks recognizing a take a hike day. I didn't know if RJ wanted to, to talk about that, but taking a hike through the parks really shows the splendor and all the places that are hard to reach. So uh, RJ, I'm hoping you can talk a little bit about the parks. And I also wanna thank you, um, RJ, because I've driven past the Estrella Golf Course, and uh, you know, just a what a year and a half ago, uh, we were very concerned that that uh, was going to turn into tumbleweeds and dust, and and lose the investment in it. And that uh, is really bumping up a couple notches now uh, that on this on what this board did and what RJ brought to to bear for us. So, um, RJ. Mr. Chairman, Supervisor Hickman, again, thank you. And as I'm sure you all are aware, today is National Take a Hike Day. Uh, National Take a Hike Day originated in 1976 through the American Hiking Society uh, to encourage people to get out and enjoy the beauty of our natural world, get exercise, and, and just take a break from your busy schedule. Um, in honor of this day, Maricopa County wants to encourage everyone to get out and take a hike. And to do that, uh, we are waiving uh, entrance fees to all of the county parks. Uh, between our county park trails and the Maricopa Trail, we have more than 600 miles of trails waiting for you to hike. So 
Mr. Chairman, members of the board, and everyone listening, take a hike. <laughs> Thank you, RJ. And, and you know, I, I will uh, second what uh, Supervisor Hickman said. Uh, it's been a real pleasure to work with you and, and see the enthusiasm that you bring to the job. So thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, moving to um, agenda item number four, Pet Showcase by Maricopa County Animal Care and Control. Monica, please introduce us to the star of today's Pet Showcase, Bruno. Good morning. So speaking of hiking, Bruno would be a great hiking partner. <laughs> He's one of the friendliest dogs at the shelter. He has a very unique intake story. He was found in Esteban Park in Phoenix wearing a t-shirt that said, my name is Bruno. If you see this, I broke my fence. Please call 602. And then the rest of the number was worn off. We did an exhaustive search, posting him on social media. He was featured on the news twice. We even had volunteers put up flyers in the neighborhood where he was found. Um, and it's a really good reminder to microchip your pet, have ID and have a dog license on your pet. But unfortunately his previous owners have not appeared. So he's available for adoption. He's two years old, has lots of energy. He would do great with an active family where he can get lots of exercise. He's also extremely loving, seeks out attention and knows basic commands. His adoption fees are currently $25. That includes surgery, microchip, vaccinations, and a dog license. November is also adopt a senior month, so all of our pets six years and up have their fees sponsored by the Bissell Pet Foundation. So for more information, please visit our website at pets.maricopa.gov. Thank you. Thank you, Monica. And uh, Bruno looks like he would make some family a very nice pet. So thank you so much. Madam Clerk, are there any announcements or corrections to the agenda? Chairman, I have one announcement. Item number 24 on page 15 is being withdrawn from the agenda today. Thank you very much. Okay, moving to planning and zoning consent hearings. Uh, on the consent agenda, item number 5, 83rd Avenue and Broadway. Madam Clerk, are there any registered speakers or comments received on these items? Chairman Supervisors, we received one speaker form from Ashley Marsh, the applicant in favor, and she is available to speak only if necessary. Thank you. The board will now consider planning and zoning consent item number five. Is, is Steve's camera? On, oh, there he is. Steve, uh, uh, I'll, I'll make the motion if you don't, but this is your district. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's muted. Steve, you're muted. Okay, Steve, we can't hear you. Supervisor Gallardo, if on the audio tab, if you see that, if you click no audio and then go back to computer audio, that might resolve the issue. Yeah. Okay, I can hear you now. All right. I apologize, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm not the, the smartest person when it comes to technology. I apologize. Um, Mr. Chairman, I move approval of consent agenda number five. We have a motion. A second, Mr. And Chairman. And a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Okay, we will now move to agenda item number six. 
planning and zoning regular hearing, text amendment, off-site advertising signs. I will ask Tom and Darian to come up for this item. And we've been discussing this for quite a while now. Yes. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, this item is a, a text amendment. It's case TA 2018-001. This item was heard by the Planning and Zoning Commission on September 9th of this year with a recommendation of approval with a vote of three, four, two against and one, one abstaining. That recommendation included the ability for certain modifications. There have been certain modifications that have been made to the overall text for clarifying language. You've received a couple of memos previously to, to this with the most current language reflecting those, those modifications. You received a, a modification or a memo this morning that outlined so, certain modifications that the applicant has agreed to that were given to us um, through uh, representatives from the billboard industry themselves. So he's agreed to implementing most of those modifications. Um, and that is, the, that is the memo today, the uh, title of the second, second revised memo dated November 17th of 20, 2021. Um, so as we go forward, we'll go through what this text amendment is about. Primarily this text amendment is an applicant driven amendment proposing to amend chapter 14 of the Maricopa County Zoning Ordinance to allow uh, a digital medium for billboards. With that, there are some associated uh, modifications throughout the zoning code that also are being proposed in clarification for, for the allowance of digital medium. Those include modifications to definitions in chapter two, modifications as they relate to the lighting and illumination of boards in chapter 11, and um, modifications in chapter 12 as it relates to the special use permit process. So as we go through that, um, we will proceed. Um, some of the uh, modifications that we're going to go through um, relate to how we regulate billboards and what mediums are allowed. Uh, currently, the Maricopa County Zoning Ordinance allows billboards. We allow billboards um, on freeways. We allow them on arterial streets, and they have to meet certain regulations. With those, there are regulations that govern size, they govern um, distances between billboards and setbacks and so forth. So the proposal before you today is to make certain modifications to the zoning ordinance as it relates. Currently, billboards are allowed within, a, within the more intense commercial and industrial zones within Maricopa County. That is not changing. The, you still need a C2, C3, or an IND2 or 3 zone in order to have a, a billboard. What is changing is the way that we, we, we administer the distance between billboards. Currently, you are required to be in rural areas within 300 or 3,000 feet of an existing billboard or 1,000 feet of an existing billboard in an urban area. Those are measured along the same street frontage. So on the next slide, what you'll see is an illustration of an existing billboard where the two billboards themselves, did you, can you go back? <laughs> back two or two slides. The billboards themselves are about 100 feet apart, but because they face two arterial streets, they meet turn code. So there's a clarification that's, or modification that's being proposed that we will now um, measure those billboards on a radius. So they would need to be within a radius setback. And what we'll do is we'll, we'll allow for, or not allow for proliferation of billboards in one area. Uh, the, the next modification has to do with the, the, um, the setback. They're proposing a minimum zero foot setback. This is a modification that's being proposed even today. It's section uh, 14, just for the record, 1403.3.1B should say a min minimum zero foot setback. The, the reason for this modification is um, it's a, it's a a frequent request for minima, minimal setbacks along particularly freeway frontages, and this will allow that and allow um, the need, allow the need to or allow for a reduction in variance requests as it relates to setbacks along those setbacks uh, along those property lines. It, it is maintaining the current setback requirements adjacent to residential and rural zones. This would only pertain to those setbacks that aren't related or adjacent to those residential areas. 
the next slide shows the uh, current existing size of billboards as there it currently exists in the in the county. Um, the the maximum allowed sign area is 300 square feet, with allowing 10% for embellishments, with a maximum height of 30 feet. What's being proposed is a modification that along the freeways, that that would be. Um, well, within 300 feet of a freeway, the maximum sign area would, would be expanded to 672 square feet, allowing for 20% embellishment or a 48 foot maximum height. That 48 feet is measured from the grade of the adjacent travel lane and to a maximum height of 70 feet if, at the grade of the sign. So basically, if the, if the travel lane is elevated above the adjacent property, maximum height on the property would be 70 feet, but it can't be more than 48 feet higher than the travel lane. <clears throat> um, this proposal actually also um, mimics most of the variance requests that we get for billboards along along a freeway. Uh, variances or UPDs in association with a rezone. So we're, we're just codifying something that is a, a typical and regularly approved modification through a, through a, through a regulatory process. Currently, the, the lighting standard, and I'm bringing up the lighting standard here because lighting was a big, um, big issue as we went through the stakeholder processes. The currently, um, billboards are allowed to be illuminated. And that illumination allows four light fixtures. Each can be 40,000 40, lumens. So as far as lighting goes, as we go through what, what the illuminations for digital billboards is, the concern from as we were evaluating this is that we weren't exceeding what was already being allowed for illumination of billboards. Moving forward, the separation from the freeways. Another concern that we heard through the stakeholder process was the protection of our scenic corridors. Currently, the zoning code protects two scenic corridors. All those corridors that are protected through the overlay zone per Chapter 10, those are the, uh, the carefree overlay and, and I believe the Highway 74 and the Wickenburg Highway. Thank you. We've mapped that out. So with, with this modification, we are actually proposing that any identified scenic corridor, either through the overlay zone or through a policy document, would now prohibit billboards. Um, whereas prior to this, it was allowed within 660 feet of that right of way along those scenic corridors. Um, the digital medium, and the main crux of this, uh, this uh, text amendment is to, to regulate this digital medium. Um, currently, the, the zoning ordinance only allows static billboards, either illuminated or unilluminated. This request before you would, uh, would set forth standards that would allow digital billboards only along, within 300 feet of an existing freeway. It excludes new, new freeways as they come forward. It will only allow them on freeways as they exist today and only within three miles of an urban area. What the, what the text amendment identifies in urban areas within three miles of a, an incorporated city or town. Yeah, Vice Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So just to clarify on this then, so even in a, a county island, if it's more than 300 feet from a freeway, we, we would not allow digital billboard, even in county islands? Correct. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. Additional standards to that, um, as it related, as we went through the stakeholder process and as, as we have research has been done, you know, digital billboards bring a certain um, persona of, of different issues. And one of those issues is visibility and the, the amount of time it takes to the transition of the different messages. What's the timing of those? How can they transition? So there are other standards that are being proposed. One of those standards is the implementation of Louver technology. And this technology would require that all digital billboards would have a horizontal louver that would uh, limit the uplighting from, from those digital billboards. And if they're within 500 feet of a residential area, they will implement a vertical louver, which will um, screen the lighting of that message board from any adjacent residential. So that's within the 500 feet of, of any residential or rural residential. Vice Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> and so is, are those louvers required, for example, representing quite a bit of the city of Phoenix. Are those required by the city of Phoenix currently? I don't believe they are in any of the municipal zoning codes in the Valley as of yet. So we would be the first. Correct. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. 
the standards set forth also set forth the, the timing of when these digital billboards could be lit. They can be lit from 11 p.m. or they will not be lit between 11 p.m. and sunrise. So these digital billboards will be, will be turned off. The display time that's being proposed with this amendment is eight seconds between messages. This is commensurate with the, with the standard time from the other municipalities that, that allow digital billboards. There will be no dynamic messaging. One of the big concerns about digital billboards is the use of video, flashing technology, um, moving, moving video. Um, there will still be static images portrayed in a digital format. There will be no animation, flashing, or blinking, or moving lights. The light levels will be dimmed after sunset to not to exceed 300 nits. Uh, and for clarification on the lighting that we currently allow with 40,000 watts or lumens, one nit equals about 2.3 lumens. So it's, it's dimmer than what would be currently allowed with the illumin illumination that the zoning code currently, currently allows. Um, the next thing comes up with as soon as we implement most of these changes, a lot of the existing billboards along the freeways, particularly as it relates to distances between each other, will become legal non-conforming. There's a, a it's being proposed that any legal non-conforming um, digital billboard or static billboard that wants to convert to digital will go through our special use permit process through the board of adjust no, through the board of supervisors. Um, that would not include, um, legal non-conforming would not include any billboard that has been established with a variance or with a, a, a rezone as part of a UPD. Those are still considered legal conforming. They would be allowed to convert unless that conversion was going to modify that previous approval. Uh, the next slide, what we're showing here is a summary of all of those changes to illustrate the amount of what's being changed. Each column shows the existing existing allowance for billboards versus what's being proposed. The highlighted areas are those areas that are being changed. So this is a tool that we can utilize to, to illustrate the extent of what's being changed or the, the lack of extent of, of the modifications. This amendment is an applicant-driven um, request it was required it is required to go through our enhanced regulatory outreach program there were four stakeholder meetings held from 2018 to today so over the course of three years there were four stakeholder meetings and three zipper meetings with the Planning and Zoning Commission um, some of the some of the concerns that we heard through there re involved um, one there was the process there was an applicant driven request um, the process itself, whether it was applicant driven or staff driven, would have gone through the same outreach program and the same, same participation would have, would have been required. There were concerns that talked about driver safety and, and um, um, what's, driver safety and distraction from billboards themselves. Um, uh, I had already mentioned the concern about visual impact to the scenic corridors as well as the dark sky ordinances. Um, that's, that, um, in answer to that, that's why it, these digital billboards would only be within that urban area, inside that illumination dome, as it's called, in, in the urban area itself. And then there was general opposition to billboards themselves. And so a lot of the, a lot of the, the negative feedback we were receiving was just an opposition to billboards in general. <clears throat> As I'd mentioned before, this went to the Planning and Zoning Board on September 9th with the ability, with, with the recommendation to make certain modifications to that language. The, the next few slides just go over each of those sections that we're making minor, minor clarifications to the proposed language. Um, the first one is the, the definition of, <clears throat> of a billboard itself in section 201, where we're moving in that definition references to connections of on and off ramps. We were trying to eliminate, we needed to eliminate confusion that we are measuring from the travel lane and not from those on and off ramps. Um, the next one has to do with the scenic corridors. The added language allows us to apply the standards for these to um, future scenic corridors. It also included the, the 7th Street and New River Road in those scenic corridor areas. <clears throat> in section 11, 12.7.1, we added language back in that's already part of the existing code as it relates to um, when those billboards would be shut off. And in section 1403.3.1A, um, 
this has to deal with um, any non-conforming sign would require special use permit um, if there were any modifications to the sign. What this added language allows, oh, I'm sorry, that's the next one. This one is that um, the language talked about that the measurement shell for the distance between billboards would include, um, would not include across the freeway. Um, except in a scenic corridor. It was stricken on the scenic corridor as they're not allowed in scenic corridors. Um, this, these next two are, are what's, what are mainly important is that these billboards, the digital billboards, we added clarifying language that they need to be oriented towards the freeway and that they need to be within 300 feet of the main travel lanes. The concern there was that they may be within 300 feet, but if they, we didn't clarify orientation towards the freeway, they could be oriented towards those main arterial roads adjacent. Um, <clears throat> and then the, finally, the 1403.3.J, this one here, we will not be requiring, a, the code would not be requiring a special use permit if what the, the modification to a legal non-conforming board would be taking the up lighting that's existing and then coming in further into compliance with the existing ordinance by making it down lighting. Um, so we needed to add that language so that we, we weren't requiring a regulatory process for somebody to come further into compliance with the code. Um, with that, there was a recommendation of approval from the Planning Zoning Commission. I'd be happy to take any questions that the board has. Okay. Any questions for our staff from the board? All right, thank you. Uh, this, uh, we have a number of speakers and this, time, this item is gonna take some time. I wanna make sure that we hear from everyone. So I'm going to limit each participant today to three minutes. I ask that all speakers be concise. And if you have sent in a presentation, it will need to be included in the three minutes. Uh, as you've heard, this board spent years on this proposal and we've taken input from industry and from our citizens. Uh, and you heard the results of that and the staff's recommendation from that. Okay, we're going to start with Mr. Bill Lally. And Bill, I would ask you also to limit your initial presentation to three minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, board members. Uh, for the record, Bill Lally with Tiffany Bosco today representing the applicant. Um, and yes, we'll, we'll be very, very brief. I know there's a lot to say, and I know there's been a lot of dialogue already. Uh, I do want to thank the board for um, taking some time in the last 30 days to evaluate some of the latest concerns that have come in. I'm going to touch on just a couple slides here. We've got a, a fairly uh, dense PowerPoint that has exhibits to answer all the questions, but let me just go through a couple brief things and then if there's any reason for questions at the end, I'll be available. Uh, next slide, please. Really, as staff talked about and Tom did a great job of laying out the specific um, changes, I, I do want to reiterate all of the time this has taken. The case is a 2018 filed case, but in fact, we spent much uh, dialogue time with staff in 2017 debating uh, and designing some of these changes. So we've been at this for better part of four years. Uh, in the last 30, 60 days uh, since the continuance in October, we have uh, worked with staff and other stakeholders, had multiple meetings, multiple calls, reviewed multiple drafts to come up with what's in front of you today. Uh, of note, made 80 plus changes from the other industry stakeholders on the latest draft. And so we've tried to do everything we possibly can over the eight to 10 public hearings, uh, outreach meetings, and then more recently um, meetings with staff to make sure that this code catches uh, every single um, question, issue, problem to make it honestly the, a leading code that every city in the Valley should look to. So next slide, please. Again, as Tom indicated, there are uh, a lot of detail changes in there, uh, but in reality, uh, the, the big picture issues are that this does allow for digital billboard conversions. Uh, every other city in the Valley that allows billboards does allow for digital billboards. So this is just uh, modifying this code to be in line with every other city in the Valley that allows for uh, billboards. But it's important to know that this code does something that no other code, no other city, no other state that we're aware of requires, which is, is to mandate a louvered technology, which is really a light spillage screening technology uh, for all new digital billboards. Not only are we limiting them to the freeways, but we're asking 
everybody to install these new louver technologies. If you're within 500 feet of residence, we're asking for uh, extra louver technologies uh, to screen any spillage uh, on site property. So it's a groundbreaking code change. Uh, no other city has gone this far in terms of trying to protect the dark skies, protect adjacent rural uh, neighborhoods uh, from digital billboards, and limiting these to freeways, uh, taking them out of the scenic corridors. And I think those are all positive, positive steps that all other cities really should look to. Um, the, the digital billboards were indicated that Tom mentioned you know, shutting off at 11. So today, static billboards along the freeways um, with certain lighting can be lit all night long. So this is an absolute change in terms of lowering uh, the brightness of the light, turning them off, dimming them, uh, which will be a, quite an improvement to the dark sky and to adjacent property owners. Uh, next slide, please. Again, the technology has been provided to everybody through all the public hearings. I don't think there's any debate that the Louvre technology is a light spillage screening technology that's state of the art that will um, change uh, the way billboards are viewed. You will definitely see the difference on the freeways from a county billboard to a city billboard. The next slide, please. And you will notice um, that this louvered plastic technology, which will direct the diodes to the intended driver and away from residents and uh, away from the sky will be absolutely noticeable. And I think most cities will, will actually end up following Maricopa County's lead. Uh, next slide, please. Um, actually, go on to the next slide. So, Mr. Chairman, board members, I, I want to be brief, but I do want to touch on one of the issues that was brought up that we just could not come to agreement on with some of the stakeholders, which was a reduction of what today's setback from rural or residential for existing billboards from 150. Uh, we kept that in there because we were implementing the Louvre technology. Uh, City of Phoenix and other cities have a 500 foot separation where you, if you're less than that, you go through a use permit process to meet a, a certain test. What we have done is required that you don't have to go through a, a test to come up with some sort of technology. We tell you what technology is proven, what technology to use in the code, it's mandated. If you're within 550 of a residential zoning district boundary, it, this code requires horizontal, horizontal and vertical louvers. It's the most state-of-the-art technology. No other city requires it. Uh, use permit process, I think, is a much um, uh, less onerous process on the industry. And I think this proposed code will protect residential properties much more so than any other code in town. So I just wanted to touch base on that. Uh, the next slide, please. Really, I'll just summarize, Mr. Chairman and board members, with the special use permit process. No other city in town requires a legislative action to be implemented when you go through a conversion of digital for legal nonconforming billboards. A lot of the cities allow for a quasi-judicial zoning hearing, which is sort of like what's akin to your Board of Adjustment hearings. Uh, less public involvement, less public notice, uh, no large signs on the property. This code contemplates a large, onerous SUP process. Notice to uh, neighbors within 400 feet, uh, large four by eight signs on the property, planning commission hearings and board of supervisor hearings. And those are, those are reserved for those special legal nonconforming billboards um, that are today going to be special. Um, the, the new code will require uh, separation um, radial, so it will create some of these legal nonconforming billboards. And those are the billboards that I think uh, would expect some extra scrutiny. So the special use permit process, Mr. Chairman and board members, I think is the appropriate process here. It is a much more open and uh, transparent process than maybe some of the cities. So, Mr. Chairman, I know there's lots uh, to talk about today. I will reserve any time at the end for questions. But again, appreciate everybody's involvement over the last four years and honestly, the hundreds of changes to this code to make it honestly the leading code in the state of Arizona. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Lally, and, and I did offer him some latitude on his time because he is the applicant uh, and some important points, I think, that needed to be made there. And we will uh, ask the applicant to stay on to answer any questions that may come up after the other presentations. So thank you. Madam Clerk, would you like to call the first speaker, please? 
Chairman, the first speaker in opposition is Harvey Shulman. Deb, do we have Harvey on the line? Mr. Shulman, if you could unmute your microphone, please. Mr. Shulman, you're still showing self-muted. You can go to the next speaker. Okay, please. Luke Edens. Hello, can you hear me okay? Yes, is this Mr. Edens or Mr. Shulman? Yes, it is. Thank you. Mr. Edens. Please introduce yourself. Hello, my name is Luke Edens. I live at 11840 West Via Montoya Court in Sun City, Arizona. I am the current vice president of the International Dark Sky Association Phoenix area chapter. The position of the International Dark Sky Association is to educate the public on how artificial light causes light pollution, ways to mitigate its impact and share how to use artificial light responsibly. Our knowledge of this tax amendment has only recently been available to us in the local communities we serve just this past year, and they're disappointed by some of the responses of certain elected officials that say otherwise. We implore you to be open-minded to our statement. I do want to thank the review board, the staffers, and the public forum for their increasing awareness about light pollution and its well-documented negative effects on wildlife and human health. The effects on the night sky is a regional issue meaning when an electric light source is used at one specific location, its light is scattered by dust and gas molecules in the atmosphere, producing a luminous background, which affects the entire region for miles away from the initial light source. This phenomena is called sky glow, and it's one of the main forms of light pollution. We oppose text amendment 2018001. Our position is the following. First, the intensity of light from thousands of LEDs on a digital billboard face causes more light pollution than any current conventional lit billboard, even if lures are used accordingly. The output of light measured in nits from these new billboards far exceeds industry lighting recommendations. Second, to rephrase my last statement, this new billboard produces nearly triple the amount of nits of illumination which is a wasteful use of precious energy towards any form of artificial lighting and will negatively impact light pollution at a regional level, not just a local level. Digital billboards produce the most light glare during sunset hours when the ambient light in the sky is at its lowest levels, causing a greater safety risk during rush hour traffic. Placement of taller billboards in the sky directly increases light pollution on an entire region from its sky glow effects. And fifth, we should always review the lighting policies and ordinances are updated to the current independent industry standards and recommendations before discussing any new lighting proposals currently or in the near future. In fact, many community lighting policies and ordinances are outdated and allowing an applicant to be the leading source for information in a proposal is a biased misdirect for following independent research recommendations and community interest. In conclusion, society is just beginning to adapt to the problems of plastics and carbon pollution in our environment. Light pollution is currently the sixth greatest pollutant in our environment and growing at epic proportions. So we need to be wise on our decisions that affect light pollution before our own understanding of the night sky will be just a nursery rhyme. Thank you for your time and consideration of our opposition in this matter, and I can answer any questions if needed. Thank you, Mr. Eden. Chairman, I'm going to call on Harvey Shulman one more time. Mr. Shulman. Okay, our next speaker in opposition is Allison T Tiffany. Hello. Oh. Mr. Shulman, is that you? Please introduce yourself. Yes, I, I'm sorry. I don't know what happened. I apologize. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. please go ahead. Yes, um, thank you. Um, I, I really have two points to make. One's a procedural one and one's a substantive one. 
Um, you know, we all know this is an important issue. Last week in the Supreme Court case on billboards, several justices mentioned the problems of avoiding blight and distraction. Um, one complained about um, digital billboard every mile for five miles. What you're doing here is effectively allowing five billboards along one mile. Um, but the procedural problem is that planning and zoning did not have a quorum and did not have an official vote when it was approved. This was a three two vote, not three two to one. Um, if you read the state laws on quorums and the board of the planning and zoning commission bylaws, um, six people was a quorum. Despite what the um, PNZ attorney said, um, a recused member does not count for purposes of a quorum. The bylaws and state law are very clear. It has to be someone present and voting. And I invite you to listen to the tr listen to what happened. And the recused member never voted. He did not abstain. He did not vote. Period. The vote was three to two, not three two to one. And that's not a, that's not a majority of a quorum because six people is a quorum, as was properly said, and that requires four votes to pass. So in this case, you don't have an official action before you. Now you think this is very technical and hyper legalistic, but this is an important issue. This was a vote of um, three of potentially 10, really nine members now of planning and zoning. You're looking at something that only 30% of the planning and zoning members voted for, 30%. This deserves more attention than a 30% vote, um, apart from the fact that it isn't legally before you and it's legally deficient for that reason. On the substance point, I wanna to get to the issue of louvers. I ask you to look at um, the decision of um, hearing officer um, Betty Drake in the city of Phoenix in ZA case 405-21-6 um, decided in October of 2021. Mr. Lally was the attorney for the applicant in that case. He made the same arguments that he's making to you about digital billboard. That Please wrap it up. Case. Will be less bright. It'll be better. The louvers are terrific. The hearing officer, after hearing dozens of witnesses, and it was a quasi-adjudicative hearing, so there was a lot of examination and so-called cross-examination by the hearing officer, specifically rejected his arguments that louvers are better. Mr. Fact, Shulman, your said, three minutes are up. Louvers are worse because they direct the light directly towards a driver or to a residence. They do direct it horizontally and it makes things brighter. So if you would le read her opinion, you would see that the basis you're being asked to approve this here was flatly rejected, flatly rejected by a zoning officer in Phoenix and is now coming to the Phoenix Board of Adjustment. Thank you very much. Vice Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just had a follow-up question on the point that was made by the last speaker. Perhaps I could direct it to Andrea, our open meeting lawyer. Yeah, so there was an accusation or suggestion made that there was an insufficient quorum for the vote that was taken by the Planning and Zoning Commission. Can you respond to that? Unfortunately, I'm not familiar with the quorum requirements for the Planning and Zoning Commission. I don't know if they have specific provisions I'm familiar with our rules for the Board of Supervisors and the parliamentary procedure in general, so I can't specifically address the issue you state, but I'm sure someone in our office would be happy to look into it and provide it. Okay, thank you. But I, I guess I, I then would have a follow-up question for that, perhaps to staff. Uh, I, I think planning and zoning makes a recommendation to us and even if their recommendation is, is negative, it can still become an agenda item for the board. Is that correct? Yes, that's my understanding. Okay, thank you. Next speaker, please. Next speaker in opposition, 
Alice and Tiffany. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. I'm here to represent just the average citizen. And I'm sorry, Bert, very emotional. I'm just a mom. I'm just a resident of Phoenix. And uh, I'm very disturbed by the extent to which this conversation, as Supervisor Gallardo said last month, that this really seems like it has become an, an industry fight. But you see, it's not an industry fight to me. It's a fight for dark skies. It's a fight that thousands upon thousands of hours were invested when the Maricopa County Comprehensive Plan was made. Thousands upon thousands of hours and thousands of stakeholders, average moms and dads like me, attended and participated in the development of 13 area plans in Maricopa County. We have 13 area plans and one Maricopa County comprehensive plan where thousands of stakeholders and thousands of hours were, were invested in discussing what, it, what we wanted to have where we live. Digital billboards weren't just created in 2018, when Becker filed this, they've been around for a long time. If, this, if the residents of Maricopa County, the people who showed up and invested time in the creation of the area plans and the comprehensive plans, if they wanted digital billboards, they would have been included in these plans. But they didn't want them. They didn't want them, and that's why they're not in there. We also have 12 international dark sky parks in the state of Arizona, 10 of which are national, two of which are state. We have 48 astronomical observatories. The Board of Supervisors must be familiar with the extent to which the, the amount of time and money and stakeholders that go into creating 48 astronomical observatories, 12 international certified dark sky parks, we have five international dark sky communities in Arizona. Arizona is, is literally the greatest state in the country for viewing the dark skies. We are different from everybody else. And I was thrilled to hear R.J. Carden's invocation or whatever, that, you know, his little speech in the beginning. I mean, it was, I think it's so, I, so it's like divine intervention to me. That, that today would be national take a hike day. I didn't know that. And I'd like to say take a hike to Becker Boards with this text amendment because the people have spoken. You're right. We have been talking Thank about you, it for Tiffany. a very long time. And we've been talking about it for years, and it's reflected in, in the, the dark sky parks, the communities, the observatories, and the area plans. And th th we have had plenty of discussion about this. And clearly— Okay, thank you so much. Next speaker, please. Next speaker is Ralph Jensen. Uh, thank you, Chairman Sellers, Supervisors. I'm speaking as a Maricopa County resident and as an astronomer on behalf of the Arizona Astronomy Consortium, representing the professional observatories in the state of Arizona. We have grave concerns about the proposed text amendment uh, that would allow conversion of a large number of traditionally illuminated billboards to these electronic message boards. Even the best baffled and louvered digital billboards emit light above the horizontal. Contrary to light aimed downward, light emitted near and above the horizontal is scattered many times in the atmosphere and reaches distances of up to 200 miles away. That makes this kind of light pollution a regional issue. It affects not just Maricopa County, but all of its neighboring counties as well. This issue requires coordination at a multi-county governmental level involving all stakeholders. Conversion of traditional billboards to larger, higher, and much brighter digital boards increases the prominence of the light dome of the Phoenix metropolitan area, 
which is already significantly raising the brightness of the night sky at the observatories in Flagstaff, on Kitt Peak and Mount Hopkins outside of Tucson, and on the, at the world's largest optical telescope, the Large Binocular Telescope, in the southeast of the state atop Mount Graham, near Safford. Astronomy, planetary sciences, and space sciences represent a capital investment in the Arizona economy of more than a billion dollars, according to a 2007 study by the Allard College of Management of the University of Arizona. And stargazing nets the state in excess of $250 million a year, as reported by the Arizona Republic on January 17, 2008. This key industry with potential for growth brings in both federal and international funding to Arizona, but that funding is contingent on the assumption of long-term pro local protections. That is why compromise legislation by the Arizona State Legislature in 2012, and I'm referring to ARS 287902, included specific state protections and placed restrictions on digital billboards. Individual local governments may impose stronger, not weaker, restrictions if they so choose. In other parts of the country, operators are required to remove six to ten existing billboards as a public benefit in order to erect or convert to one electronic message board. To compensate for their excess brightness, larger and brighter electronic boards should require removal of a larger number of existing billboards. The present language omits any such requirements, limits the opportunity for public comment and oversight, and fails to involve input from neighboring governments who are stakeholders in this issue. I would therefore urge rejection of this text amendment, which is not in the best interest of Maricopa County residents, nor of the state of Arizona. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you, Mr. Jansen. Claude Haynes. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to have to confess that I'm a little confused because I s would like to confirm uh, the current text that is being proposed for uh, Article 1112.7.1. It seemed on the screen different from what was published in the agenda for the meeting. Uh, is it has the text changed uh, and and not been published? And my, my concern is that I want to be sure that the original uh, language uh, of that section is uh, retained in the, uh, in the uh, ordinance. Okay, I will uh, confer with our staff. So, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, the language that was, was put in since the time of the Planning and Zoning Commission is to reiterate a current code requirement that would require those boards to be um, shut off by 11 p.m. Okay. So that the, it was clarifying language, placing back in something that was inadvertently left off in the PNC version. I, I am appreciative of that, but I do want to raise a concern that the public has not been able to see the document that you are going to be voting on, and that seems... Uh, a bit out of ordinary. Um, I also have some serious questions. Do we know that this new technology really works? This was uh, just added to Becker Board's uh, application uh, on the date when it was approved. That's the first time the language for this came up on September 9th. So I'm not sure that we have good documentation of that. And I am also questioning whether or not this is available from numerous vendors or if this is benefiting just a specific vendor with that unique technology. Okay, and we will, get, we will get the answer to those questions from the applicant after we complete all the speakers. Thank you. I'm also concerned that there is no language in here which pushes uh, current non -com legally non-compliant boards, billboards that are lit from below to uh, be compliant with Article 1112.3.2 for top-mounted lighting. Um, this uh, this would be helpful because those uh, underlit boards absolutely contribute to sky glow, uh, and it seems 
that recent billboards uh, have been by, I guess, a simple variance process, uh, even boards, can, uh, not just from Becker boards, but from others, that new static billboards uh, seem to be lit from below, uh, disregarding the request to have them eliminated from above. And, and my final point would be, there are no density limits here. Uh, we already have across the valley uh, over 70 uh, digital billboards so far, and they're almost approaching the number of uh, static billboards that we have. If you drive to a Cardinals game uh, coming from uh, I-10 to the Loop uh, 201, you pass over a dozen digital billboards, one after another after another, as you get to the stadium. Um, it, it strikes me that while many of the things in here in this ordinance are good, there are things that have been left out that are important and that should be considered not just by a text amendment driven by vendors and the billboard community, but that would be uh, handled more fairly if this were returned to planning and development with an instruction that the staff is the one in charge of the language and the wording and to do it quickly in, in regard to what Supervisor Gallardo had stated, uh, fast track this so we do it as quickly as possible. Okay, using thank you, Mr. Template. Haynes. Thank you. Next, we have Richard Green. Mr. Chairman and Supervisors, um, I'm an astronomer. I'm assistant director of the astronomy program at the University of Arizona. And like my colleague, Ralph Jansen, I'm speaking on behalf of the Arizona Astronomy Consortium. That represents all the professional observatories in the state of Arizona. And as he said, I will elaborate, but we have major concerns about this proposed text amendment allowing the installation of electronic message displays in place of billboards that are currently conventionally illuminated. There's a fundamental difference between shining light on a reflective surface and these electronic boards which radiate light outwards. The half-inch louvers are an improvement, no doubt, but you saw the diagram and the upward angle, even though it was cut in half, is still about 15 degrees above horizontal. And so on the one hand, that puts almost a third of the light output up into the sky, and those angles that go just above horizontal have the longest legs. And so that light actually gets the farthest and has the biggest impact on the big telescopes like Large Binocular Telescope outside of Safford. The Phoenix Light Dome is its biggest source of light pollution. You know that in recognition of the value of the natural desert environment and the importance of astronomy in the state here, most counties and localities do have regulations to control skyward light trespass. And the core of those regulations is what we call fully shielded fixtures. They allow no light to go above horizontal. And to remind you how serious they are, look at those gigantic masts that support the lights above the freeway loops. They do that so that the freeway can be fully illuminated without sending light above horizontal. If you allow more electronic message displays with even that best current technology, it's basically taking a step 50 years backwards in terms of the lighting regulation that has helped preserve dark skies here. I'll also note that the range of brightness for full color rendering has its limits and you heard about them. So that 300 nits in, at nighttime is approximately a factor of three brighter than really good visibility required for nighttime boards according to the Illumination Engineering Society based on clear visibility levels. So this state, as, as Dr. Jensen said, has turns out 10% of the world's largest telescopes and the largest telescope. This text amendment really runs counter to the needs of one of the most visible and high impact industries in this state, professional astronomy. Thank you. Larry White 
Whitesell in opposition, and I believe Mr. Whitesell has a presentation. Yes, I do. If we could display that, uh, I would appreciate it. <clears throat> and if we could start with slide two, that would be helpful. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Chairman and uh, Supervisors, I'm Larry Whitesell, 7120 North 20th Street in Phoenix. Thank you for the opportunity to speak today. I'm opposed to the text amendment in its entirety. The applicant wants us to believe that this is more restrictive than the current ordinance, but it is not. You have received hundreds of relevant statements of concern about specific provisions of the TA. So this morning, I will address more general concerns. First, as the prior speaker noted, uh, there are modifications to the TA that were presented as late as this morning. It's impossible to prepare relevant comments when the proposal is changed at the last minute. Next, <clears throat> the general signage regulation article 1401.1 states the purpose being to promote public safety, create an attractive business climate and enhance the physical appearance of the community. Supervisor Gallardo stated on October the 6th that his interest is in the best public policy for the people of Maricopa County. I ask Supervisor Gallardo to tell us how this TA meets his values. Uh, slide three, please. The applicant stated that there will be minimal impact on the conditions that exist today. And I encourage you to consider impacts next month, next year, next decade. The proposed TA does not protect many areas of the county from being damaged by billboards. Although specific scenic corridors in the north are excluded, areas in the southern part of the county are also scenic. For example, the Sonoran Desert National Museum lies within Maricopa County. But the current text amendment would allow digital billboards to, to obstruct this natural beauty. Slide four, please. I-8 stretches the full length of the county and is a major east-west route for people from across the country. We should not obstruct their views of our natural environment. And State Route 85 linking I-10 and I-8 is the recommended route for Valley residents to travel to San Diego and other cities and towns in Arizona and California. The applicant may rebut the current zoning prohibits billboards in these areas. However, we all know that municipal boundaries are often enlarged to incorporate county lands, zoning is subject to change, and variances are often sought. In fact, in a letter that you received from the town of Gilbert, the concern is stated that this TA will provide incentives for property owners to rezone their property, thus allowing billboards along these other beautiful scenic corridors. One thing is certain, once a billboard is in place, it is there forever. These heavily traveled freeways will be prime targets for billboard companies. Uh, slide five, please. This is a photo that I took uh, last November, about a year ago, as I came home from San Diego. It's on State Route 85 between Gila Bend and Buckeye. Imagine a 672 foot digital billboard with zero setbacks along the side of this road. Please reflect on the words of the invocation that was delivered at the beginning of today's meeting. You and county staff are custodians of the public assets of the county. Your priority should be to protect those assets, especially those of natural beauty for the continued use and enjoyment of the public. Recommending passage of this text amendment places for-profit gain of billboard companies over the interests of the public. Thank you, Mr. Whitesell. Thank you. Neil had it. Hello, you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Mr. Chairman and Supervisors, this is Neil Haddad, uh, 3402 North 42nd Street, Phoenix, AZ. This is such a complex and permanent issue that the text amendment should be rejected. If the county believes a change is warranted to the zoning ordinance or if it should come back for consideration, then the process should be initiated by county staff with the input from all industry and resident stakeholders and not written by one individual signed company. We have sought out and provided to you information 
from national, international, and local experts in the fields of glare and brightness, of traffic and driver safety, of public views, of dark skies, and of the study of astronomy in Arizona and its vast contributions to our economy. Hundreds of residents from across the county voiced their opposition to making these changes in such a piecemeal fashion, decisions that will have a generational impact. It's obvious that the TA was written by one sign vendor to benefit the applicant itself. There has been no discussion by the applicant or county officials on dwell times for messages and no discussion on the illumination levels of signs. Unlike scores of jurisdictions across the U.S., as Professor Green mentioned, there has been zero discussion about takedown boards in exchange for putting up far more intense digital faces. That's because no requirement to take down boards only benefits the applicant. The applicant also wants the process to be limited to staff review and approval and then voted by, on by only you, supervisors. No planning and zoning commission, no quasi-judicial appeal to the Board of Adjustment. If they were so sure of their position, why not let it go through the two-step quasi-judicial process? Getting to this point has been a problem, and Mr. Shulman uh, specified the issues with the planning and zoning quorum. During this process, there's been no input from stakeholders to affect change in the document. Even industry stakeholders have been limited in their input. That's why you have a proposal from other sign companies before you, and we agree that a 500-foot separation from residential is essential. However, there's still a sky glow in the night sky from these signs. And so it is curious to us why the county is seemingly picking one winner, the applicant, over a sea of stakeholders. To vote against this means that you're recognizing the hundreds of people across the county who are in opposition to this egregious proposal. To vote against this means you're supportive of a full process with all interested stakeholders to come up with the best proposal available. To vote against this means you want to support our dark skies and protect the visual legacy of our county and state. Please deny the proposed text amendment TA 2018-001. Thank you, Mr. Haddad. Thank you for listening, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you, sir. Dan, excuse me, Dan Penton. Thank you. Good morning, and thank you for the opportunity to uh, provide input on the Becker Amendment, TA 2018-001. Uh, you may recall uh, numerous letters of opposition and requests have been submitted by private citizens and neighborhood groups, local and national organizations for further clarification on the county's position with respect to billboards generally and specifically. All of these requests are contained in the staff report provided to the board, but by which now I would have hoped you had time to review. Last month's questions were again raised about the billboards and this board's intentions and whether the county would oppose the Becker Amendment while still preparing to permit digital billboards in the county and addressing a flawed notification process. From a process standpoint, this is impossible. Uh, in 2015, the text amendment to the sign ordinance was before this before planning and development in this board, which ultimately adopted changes to on-premise signs and shelved the off-premise sign, sign portion got shelved. Fast forward to 2018, an applicant initiated text amendment was submitted by Becker Board proposing a unilateral amendment to a highly controversial topic, which I imagine they felt emboldened to initiate such an amendment because once again, the county was silent on its position. After initial work group sessions under three under the enhanced regulatory outreach process, industry representatives and planning engaged in discussions without any public outreach and input, um, which ultimately uh, pro the proposal ended up getting tabled indefinitely. Now, a year and a half later, April 2021, Becker Boards restarted the process to seek approval of what could be called a dream ordinance that was initiated by themselves. And once again, no public notification or outreach to ensure this matter and the process was transparent, inclusive, and equitable. This TA was only discovered by chance only after a handful of us, um, including myself, had signed up for EROP notifications. Um, we then took it upon ourselves to notify the um, notify people in the county, essentially doing the county's job for them. Um, 
excuse me. Once it became known, over 700 residents, organizations, and interest groups uh, responded with overwhelming opposition um, to, you know, to address the um, Supervisor Gallardo's question last month, where in the hell were all these people before? How could you reasonably expect the public to show up to and participate in the process when there was no notification? That is the flawed process. Uh, therefore, you know, with my request that this, um, this amendment be denied and be, and go through the process, with an inclusive process from the, from the start. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Penton. Chairman, last speaker on my list in opposition is Lisa Perez. I'm here. Yes, go ahead, Lisa, please. Thank you. My name is Lisa Perez, and I live at 7139 West Forest Grove Avenue in Phoenix. But I'd like to make the point that where I live is within a two-minute walk, and I'm on Maricopa County land. So this issue has an impact on my community directly. I echo the comments that have made before me about lighting pollution, distraction, driving, area plans, dark skies, illumination, takedown of boards, mm -hmm. and how public policy is being made and the impact that is much more far reaching than Maricopa County itself. I, I find it a little disturbing that the county, when asked itself, claims to not know the number of billboards that currently exist within the county. How do we truly know the impact of this text amendment when we do not know the numbers that currently exist within the county? I echo Mr. Penton's comments and others that I feel like the outreach process was not sufficient. I too only found out about this issue in May of this year and only because I had signed up proactively for the Enhanced Regulatory Outreach Program or EROP on another issue. This to me is not sufficient public outreach and certainly not one at the level of the largest counties in the country should be providing. Mm -hmm. I'd also like to point out while the applicant members of the board mentioned that this issue has been ongoing for three to four years and as Mr. Penton had mentioned, this issue was continued in July of 2019 and not brought back until May of 2021. For whatever reason, that is almost two year lull that this TA sat on a shelf. I urge you to deny this text amendment and if the need to implement a change to the zoning ordinance is still warranted then the county should lead the effort in discussion and outreach to cities and towns and residents, not just industry, should be allowed to be at the table. I thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you, Ms. Perez. Chairman, for the record, Tom Mosden registered his uh, position in opposition. Now we move on to the speakers in favor. First speaker is Taylor Earle. Good morning. Can you hear me okay? Yes, go ahead, please. For your record, my name is Taylor Earl, 3101 North Central Avenue. I am here on behalf of Clear Channel Outdoor. Between the last hearing to today, we have worked with Outfront Media as well really hard uh, with staff to, to clean up inconsistencies in the prior draft. Uh, drafting a cogent and internally consistent text amendment is not easy to do, and it does take multiple minds. Um, there were inconsistencies, ambiguities, and opportunities for misunderstanding, misinterpretation, and, and frankly, uh, abuse. So we had formal sit-down meetings with staff and follow-up communications to get to a draft that was much cleaner and removed much of the ambiguities and potential for uh, misunderstanding. But we greatly appreciate staff's work on this, and we are glad that the applicant is proposing a version that accepts most of this cleanup. And it's our understanding that this cleaned-up draft is what the applicant is requesting approval of today. In our minds, that's absolutely critical for staff to be able to properly administer the amendment for the many years to come, which is why staff supported the cleanups. So with the applicants now proposing a cleaned up draft, the main point of difference between our position and the applicant's position is the distance to residential. Um, they're proposing 150 and we're proposing 500 feet. Compromise is a core value of the county. The county regularly seeks for compromise in cases that are brought before it. For example, the board seeks for compromises in cases where an applicant is building his or her own new subdivision or apartment building. But here you have a county-wide amendment of the county's zoning ordinance. There should be even more compromise when the effect is across the entire county. So the county now has an opportunity to strike a compromise with the residents by requiring 500 feet between illuminated billboards, which would be up lighting, down lighting, or digital, and residential properties. But the applicant wants to limit the distance to 150 feet. 
And in our mind, that's just inappropriate as a blanket rule. It just can't be justified. It's significant that the billboard industry is coming to you, offering a compromise for 500 feet to residential as an accommodation. I'm speaking on behalf of Clear Channel Outdoor. Wendy Riddell will speak on behalf of Outfront Media and seek the same uh, compromise. I can't think of a time when I've offered up a restriction in a public hearing as a compromise to the neighbors that wasn't accepted. We agree with 500 feet to a rest area, it's 500 feet to schools, 500 feet to a park. That's all part of the, the, the applicant's proposal. But why would you then treat less, have less distance to residential, less protection going to 150 feet? Uh, what's the justification for requiring more spacing to a park than to someone's home? As to louvers, Mr. Lawley's 100 foot, 150 foot position relies upon those louvers doing everything he says they will do. But even if they do, it leaves open the, open the door for misinstallation and misalignment of those louvers. It requires the county to constantly police uh, how those are applied over time. 500 feet is much better because it's constantly in place and doesn't require that type of policing. It's truly a compromise with the community. The question we have to end with is why not accept better spacing to residential that matches what you require to other uh, uses such as a park or rest area? Why not put a version in place that offers a compromise with the community that provides greater spacing between illuminated billboards and people's homes? Um, it's the right compromise for the Board of Supervisors to approve. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Earl. Wendy, Wendy Rydell with a presentation. Ms. Rydell, are you on? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Can you hear me? Yes, please go ahead. Uh, thank you. Wendy Riddell with the law firm Barry Riddell, and I am speaking here today on behalf of Outfront Media, working closely, collaboratively, collaborated with Clear Channel. Next slide, please. As Taylor mentioned, it is really critical to us as representatives of the industry that there is a proper balancing here between the property owners, the rights of those property owners, cities and towns in the industry. Next slide. We are also very grateful that, um, frankly, of all the time that staff has spent with us working through this language with the cleaned up language that's in front of you. We think that is very helpful. It's gonna go a long way to avoiding disputes over interpretations. But there really does just remain one critical issue that I hope the board will consider in light of all of the opposition, the concerns that have been raised. And keep in mind, I'm here representing a billboard company. We are the ones suggesting to you there really does need to be a 500 foot separation from a residential home. Next slide. We get there by looking at the surrounding municipalities. The only you know, comparable one is the city of Phoenix at 500 feet. That is the, the minimum that you see in any of the surrounding jurisdictions. And we think that it's really important that you maintain that 500 feet and be consistent with that minimum. Next. And I will tell you the ordinance itself, it requires a 500 foot separation from a park. It requires a 500 foot separation from a school. Heck, it requires a 500 foot separation from a roadside rest area. Surely a private home deserves the same consideration. That 500 foot, it should be treated with that 500 foot separation. Next slide. I'll give you an example. This is over in Levine, where you can see if it's 150 feet, there is an existing billboard out here that can be converted to digital. And um, as you've heard some of the testimony, perhaps with not a complete notification to everybody that's involved. With a 500 foot separation, certainly any applicant would have the ability to try to go through a variance process and seek a digital still yet, but there would at least be a notice involved, some sort of notice letting the neighbors, the community know that that were to occur. Next. So again, I would encourage you to um, make sure that you're including the cleaned up language that was vetted by staff that was circulated this morning. But more importantly, I would encourage you to support the compromise that we here, on behalf of Outfront and Clear Channel as industry representatives 
but long-term you know, vested stakeholders in the community suggest that there needs to be a 500 foot separation from residential for all illuminated and digital boards. And I guess I would encourage you to ask the applicant, why does a digital or illuminated board need to be as close as 150 feet from a home? Why is that a critical component? And why can we not find compromise here that ultimately we believe is in the best interest of not only our industry, but the community at large and certainly Maricopa County? Thank I'm you, happy Ms. to Rigel. answer any questions you may have. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Brent Wood. Mr. Wood, are you on? Mr. Wood, you are self-muted. Can you unmute one of your microphones? Please. You're still, still self-muted, Mr. Wood. He's still muted, Deb. He is still muted. Chairman, the last person on the list is Amy Phillips, and she only submitted a comment, does not wish to speak, only register her position as in favor. Okay, thank you. Can you hear me now? This is yes, Brent. Mr. Wood, please go ahead. Right, thank you. Brent Wood, Outfront Media, 2390 East Camelback. Thank you to the Board of Supervisors for your time today. And also thank you uh, to county staff for your time and effort to clean up uh, the text amendment language. We support the amendment with 500 foot separation to residential. Uh, that matches Phoenix and what we feel is uh, the right thing to do. The 500 foot spacing should allow the outdoor industry and neighbors to coexist peacefully. And uh, those are, Thank you for your time and short and sweet. Thank you, Mr. Wood. Uh, Mr. Lally, would you like to answer some of the questions that were raised by uh, some of the opposition speakers? Yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, thank you for that opportunity. And again, I'll try to be brief. Um, let me just walk down through a couple of the, the concerns that were listed. And I think it's a little bit of confusion as to how the code is actually read. So. Uh, I'll just kind of hit these, and if I leave anything out, Mr. Chairman, board members, please jump in and, and, and remind me. Um, the under-lighted concept. So uh, City of Phoenix and most jurisdictions in the Valley allow for static billboards to have lights that are at the bottom of the board shining up at the sign. Maricopa County has two options. You can do that, and you can turn them off midnight, or you have up light or you have down lighting, which is on the top shining down. And so um, I think there is some confusion. There are a lot of Phoenix billboards out there, a lot of other jurisdictions that have that other type of lighting. People might be confused as to what jurisdiction those are in. This code absolutely addresses um, and reiterates the, the Maricopa County code requirement for uh, standards for up lighting and standards for down lighting. So it's very, very clear. And I think staff would agree that um, that the rules for that are um, very clear for all to follow. City of Phoenix has a different rule, and I think that can be confusing. Um, but really, we're talking about is conversions to digital. So it, obviously, with digital and with digitals with louvers, um, the up lighting or down lighting uh, spillage effects is much, much minimized. Um, there was a question about whether this technology really exists. Um, We've talked to the industry manufacturer of this. There are 10 plus states uh, that are utilizing this uh, technology, not mandated, but uh, companies in those states have utilized this technology. There are a couple videos in my presentation, I'm sure you've all seen it, that show exactly how this technology works. So it does work. Um, and it's groundbreaking for uh, an entity, a municipality to mandate it and require it. We wouldn't put it in there 
if we didn't think it worked. We wouldn't show you videos of it if we didn't think it worked. Um, so the technology does work. And I think there was a, a claim about, well, there's 70 other billboards around the valley. And yes, let me just reiterate, there are nine other jurisdictions in the valley that allow digital billboards. Those nine jurisdictions have allowed digital billboards since the 2012 state law was enacted. In 2012, the Arizona legislature, after about six months worth of debate and compromise between the industry and the dark sky um, industry, came up with a state law for all cities to follow. Those other cities, the other nine, frankly, some of the nine largest cities in Maricopa County have followed that law for the last 10 years. This county text amendment follows the Arizona law to the T. It protects the astronomy community. It protects the telescopes uh, outside of our community. The staff report walks through how it does that, shows you the map that the Arizona State Legislature adopted as a protected area. This in no way is contrary to anything that the industry and the legislature came together to propose. Now, if, if the industry didn't like that state law, then they can go back to the legislature, they can change the law, and the local jurisdictions would have to follow it. But the law in the state today allows for this type of conversion along the freeways in these areas. Uh, we've gone above and beyond and restricted other areas, scenic corridors, that most jurisdictions haven't done. So. The law is there for us to follow. Uh, we are following it. It in no way harms uh, the industry that was negotiated over 10 years ago. Um, there was also another reference to I-8, I-8 being a, a scenic corridor in the southern part of the, of the county. I-8 is not listed as an allowed freeway in the definition section. So um, yes, if a billboard was down there, would it, would it um, interfere with some, some landscape and some scenic areas? Yes but it's not listed as an eligible freeway in this code, so it is prohibited. And let me just remind everyone, to get a billboard along a freeway in an allowed area, you also have to have uh, commercial zoning. You have to be within and, and in proximity to a commercial uh, business. So you can't just go out in the middle of a preserve uh, in southern Arizona and plop a billboard up, uh, not in the county, and not per this code. Uh, the SUP process, uh, Mr. Neil Haddad uh, misrepresented the process he mentioned that uh, we should be going through a quasi-judicial process. I have mentioned on every public hearing for the last two years that the county attorney has made it very clear that the state law that applies to counties and applies to the Board of Adjustment does not allow for us to bring use permits to the Board of Adjustment. If we want to make changes and create a process for conversions, the only process available to us is either administrative approval, which has zero public input, or go through the Board of Supervisors. The special use permit process allows for public notice. It allows for a planning commission hearing and recommendation of the Board of Supervisors. So it is akin to a full-fledged zoning case. If you compare that to most jurisdictions, CD of Phoenix being the number one uh, user of this, their quasi-judicial process gives notice to applicants within 150 feet and a tiny two-by-two -two sign put on the property, HOAs in the area. This is tenfold what the City of Phoenix process is, and it does have two full public hearings. So I would say that the process in Maricopa County is much, much more robust, even if we had the quasi-judicial process uh, available to us legally. This is the more superior process to go through if you're truly seeking community input and community uh, notice. Lastly, Mr. Chairman and board members, I will mention the 500-foot um, spacing requirement that was referenced by the last two or three speakers. So the 500-foot separation for, for illuminated boards is what the code has been in Maricopa County since the 70s. Uh, the, the code today requires 150 feet separation from residential. It does allow and require 500 feet from parks. I don't know what the policy is between those, but I'll tell you, if, if you seek to follow the City of Phoenix's 500-foot ban, then you have to follow their code altogether. And as I mentioned to you, they have a quasi-judicial use permit process uh, to be less than 500 feet. That, that is used often. It's a quasi-judicial judicial process. It doesn't ensure screening. It doesn't ensure light spillage doesn't spill over. One hearing officer hears an applicant, and maybe that applicant provides um, 
adequate information, maybe the adjacent neighbors are involved. That's a public hearing process that may or may not protect uh, the neighbors. What we have designed and what we've dictated in this code is, is not a, well, we hope we catch it in a public hearing process later on uh, with 150 foot notice. We have mandated, mandated a light uh, screening process technology that's state of the art um, that is required no matter what. There's no, hey, go to a hearing um, in front of a hearing officer and hope you make a good argument and then you can get a billboard next to a single family home. This requirement mandates that screening technology on any billboard less than 500 feet, it's both horizontal and vertical louvers to, to protect those residential neighbors. We're not gonna rely on a future hearing process and a future notice process to those neighbors. We're gonna protect them with the code as it is today. So in terms of having the best interest of the community um, at large, at play, this process automatically protects those adjacent neighbors. You can believe the, the, the technology or not. We've shown videos. I, I don't think anyone has provided any evidence that this technology isn't the best state of our protection in the industry. So with that, Mr. Chairman, uh, we're happy to answer any specific questions. The proposal that's in front of you today is a revised version that includes about 15 staff changes over the last 30 days. It includes about 80 plus changes from the industry over the last uh, week or so. Uh, it's, it's the best um, draft to encompass everybody's input. Uh, we just uh, disagree on the 500 feet because we believe the county code is actually superior to what Phoenix has in place. And with that, Mr. Chairman, Board members, be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Lally. Uh, a quick question for the clerk. The language that we're voting on today is up to date, is that? Chairman, I will defer to staff because they did submit some updated um, language this morning. Mr. Tom? Chair, yes. Mr. Chairman, the, uh, the memo today dated November 17th, 2021 includes that version that's been described by um, the other industry representatives as the one providing the clarification, clarification language. So that is the most up to date is the one that you have before you today. And it, it does represent the second revised draft. Questions, comments from the board? Yeah, vice chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I wanna thank everybody who has come today to comment on this important item. Uh, I do have experience with this. I was over on the Phoenix City Council uh, when we had these same discussions. I've heard Phoenix being referenced several times, and and actually some of the, the folks who, who spoke today were involved back then. So I know it's a, a very emotional issue, and again, I wanna thank everybody for their involvement in coming together uh, with with the compromise on this. Mr. Ellsworth had a few questions for you. Um, first of all, the um, this this issue with the quorum, with the Planning and Zoning Commission, would, would, can you address that for us? Sure, Mr. Chairman, Supervisor Gates. Time of the hearing, we had six members present, which constitutes a quorum. One of those members had to recuse themselves. Um, with that, we did have a, a, a quorum present um, the city attorney or the county attorney who advises the board advised that we did have a quorum present that the vote could proceed and that would require a majority of those eligible to vote. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. And um, we there was a chart up earlier, or actually it's still up there. And I'm going to pull it up here on mine. Maybe I can see it here a little bit better. But there's there are different types of freeways that are addressed there. I'll see if I can. Viewed here. Okay, so for a rural freeway, does this text amendment allow digital billboards along rural freeways? No, it does not. the uh, The text amendment provides the clar uh, the, the clarifying language between urban and rural, which would be within three miles of an incorporated city or town. Okay, so so in other words, the only place that these can go is within three miles of an incorporated city or town. That's correct. So there's been a lot of discussion about you know, dark skies and, and, and presumably impacting observatories in Pima County and things like that. But again, there's, there, there is a one specific area, again, like you said, 
within three miles of a city or town? That's correct. Okay. Um, can you address, there's been questions about the fact that this text amendment was brought by an applicant. It wasn't, uh, it, it wasn't started by staff. Is there a, a difference as far as the um, notice that's required or the stakeholders that are involved in a applicant-driven text amendment versus staff-driven? So regardless of whether the applicant or the uh, text amendment is driven by staff or is brought forward by an applicant themselves, they're both required to go through the enhanced outreach, uh, enhanced regulatory outreach program, which requires those notifications to the stakeholders. It's the same, it's the same outreach effort that would made, be made regardless. And as that goes through, staff is fully in participation with, with that, um, as, as is evident with the um, presentation today by the applicant. We've had several meetings with them representing the concerns that we've heard through those stakeholder meetings. There have been several modifications since I've been on in J July that were directly related to those stakeholder meetings. The draft before you today has been driven. There are several modifications that were driven directly by staff. I, I would be comfortable in stating that the draft you're seeing before you would not be much different than what staff might come back for going through that same regulatory process. Okay, and Mr. Chair, some of these um, modifications that, that are here in the latest, and we had this discussion about this latest draft, those are actually, had been requested by other um, billboard companies than the applicant, is that right? Correct. It's the other billboard companies. There's some general concern has been stated before by Mr. Riddell and Mr. Earl that there was there was some language that they would like to have tightened up. Actually, clarifying this um, terms such as static versus digital. Um, so the modifications are all um, clarifying statements. There were no sub substantive changes to the regulation. All right. Thank you. Um, Mr. Chair, uh, I would be, I'm prepared to make a motion, but if, if my colleagues have questions, and I would certainly defer uh, for that. Any other questions, comments from the staff or from the board? Okay, Vice Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And before I make the motion, uh, just, just wanted to make a couple comments. Um, so I uh, represent District 3. Uh, on the Board of Supervisors and uh, all of my city council area that I represented is subsumed within District 3 when I was on there. So I'm just going to say uh, I take a back seat to no one when it comes to digital billboards. When I served on the Phoenix City Council, I worked with then Councilwoman Peggy Neely to get any additional digital billboards prohibited on the 51 north of the Piastua Peak. Um, this text amendment will prohibit uh, digital billboards on Carefree Highway in District 3, on I-17 up towards New River, as well as this additional uh, part that was just added, 7th Street and New River. Um, so under this text amendment, there'll be no digital billboards, no new digital billboards uh, allowed within District 3 at all. Um, I'm impressed by the louver technology which is required under this text amendment um, as was referenced by the applicant's attorney. This is not a new technology. It's been used um, in other, other jurisdictions. Um, but as opposed to the city of Phoenix where you might get this technology required going through a quasi-judicial process, under this text amendment it will be required. Um, and that that is very important. Um, so with that then, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, I would make a motion to approve agenda item six, but specifically uh, the second revised draft of TA 2018001, um, uh, which is again, uh, authored by the applicant, but it does include several uh, changes offered by the billboard industry. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, um, I wanted to make sure I put some uh, some thoughts down on paper too that I didn't that it, I didn't want to uh, miss. I know this has been going on for three years. We've had questions um, in three years. Uh, when I came onto this board, um, uh, that board at one point um, decided to hear my call about a moratorium on rules and regulations, but 
it absolutely put in place or, or strengthened uh, going to stakeholders. Um, I think I, I was, my thoughts on that time when I came onto the board is, you know, we are really getting away from the land of the free and the home of the brave when it comes to regulatory restrictions. It just seemed to be happening uh, to businesses uh, all across this state. Um, and you and we truly did at one point have a thing where we're operating a business and all of a sudden there's a new regulation uh, put in place. So I was very happy to see this go through uh, the stakeholder group um, and the stakeholder groups made of constituents, made of industry uh, to be able to talk this out with our staff. And um, I still am very pleased that this is how the county has decided to go. So um, I am very glad, <laughs> Bill, you do have experience and I, I will reflect back on this all, all the time. It seems like every single time we're on a board, there is somebody that has a history uh, that can bring their experiences either through government or through business uh, on just about every topic. So thank you for, thank you for bringing up your experience with the, with the city of Phoenix and, and how this looks now that you're representing um, unincorporated areas. This is unincorporated area. I, I heard the statement made, you know, well, the city of Phoenix, the city of Phoenix is like, well, this is, this is not some sort of mandate that blankets the entire county. This is for unincorporated area. So I'm gonna second the motion today because this text amendment is good for my district and good for the county. This is a case where the applicant has spent their own time and money to work on this code update over the last three plus years, adopting most if not all of the changes that, are, uh, that our staff uh, recommended. This new code, while allowing some existing signs on freeways to convert to digital, will put into place new restrictions, restricting billboards and scenic corridors, including in my district, with the inclusion of the Olive Avenue, the Carefree Highway, and the Castle Hot Springs corridors. This code also requires a first in the state state-of-the-art louvered technology to mitigate any light spillage. It also requires any digital sign to be turned off at 11 p.m. every night. That is very important that didn't, I don't think got mentioned uh, by anyone. I've been out on stargazing trips and you don't go out on stargazing trips at uh, eight o'clock at night. You have to go early in the morning or you have to go late at night just because of the growth of Phoenix and all the other municipalities in that glow. So what if everyone started turning off their lights at 11 o'clock? Maybe, maybe I could get my daughter out at midnight instead of two in the morning. Currently our code allows lights on signs to shine into the sky all night long. Corresponding to my point, um, the cities in my district that allow digital billboards include Avondale, Goodyear, Glendale, Buckeye, Tolleson, El Mirage, and now recently Surprise. None of these cities have gone as far as this text amendment uh, by using light shielding technology. Once again, I believe that Maricopa County is leading the way in this space, and I hope other jurisdictions adopt similar technology and protect our dark nights and scenic corridors. So I'm proud to second the motion. Thank you, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Well, I'd just like to say that, you know, I was surprised at people today who said that they had not heard about this until very recently because certainly in the three years I've been on the board, it's been discussed frequently, a lot of public forums and a lot of media coverage. So I don't know how people have missed it up until recently, but I do think that this is an important step forward. You know, we, we may learn after this is in place that there are other things that we can do that improve it even more, but I think this is a significant step forward for us today. Vice Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just out of an abundance of caution, might I offer an amendment to my motion? Certainly. Okay, uh, that um, uh, the motion should also include the change that um, uh, was mentioned um, uh, earlier that um, uh, that there's a minimum zero foot setback, is that accurate? 
Uh, Mr. Chair, Board Member, our Supervisor Gates. Um, yes, that's correct. We we would like to clarify that it's a minimum zero foot setback. So that's that's my amendment that I would offer to my motion. Okay, we have an amendment to the motion. I will amend my second to reflect that. Okay. All in favor, then, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Okay, under statutory hearings, clerk of the board, item number seven, liquor license applications, A, owner transfer from Corte Bella Golf Club. Madam Clerk, are there any registered speakers or comments received on item 7A? Chairman, none were received for this item. Motion to approve items uh, 7A, please, Mr. Chairman. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Under statutory hearings, transportation, item 8 a through B, patent easement abandonment road files as listed on the agenda. Madam Clerk, are there any registered speakers or comments received on items 8A and B? Chairman, none received for items 8A and B. The board will now consider items 8A and B. Mr. Chairman, move to approve items 8A and B uh, with, a, with a quick comment as well. Okay, we have a motion. Second. And a second. Um, just, I just want to point out to the chairman, I'm watching uh, Supervisor Gallardo, and uh, his, his feed is extremely delayed, and I'm a little bit worried if he's wanting to make a motion or a second. Um, I, I don't know how timely it's going to be. <laughs> so watching him say I or nay and, and seeing it 20 seconds later, I don't know what's going on with our system, but just want to point that out. Mr. Chairman, can you hear me? <laughs> yes, we can hear you. Um, let me switch laptops. Maybe that might help me or help us all here. Let me switch laptops if you don't mind. And uh, hopefully that works. Okay, let's vote on this item first, and then you can switch. Uh, aye. All in favor, aye. please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. That motion carries. Okay, under county officers, clerk of the board, item nine, application for Anthem fireworks display, items 10 through 11, special event license for World Bicycle Relief, and International Mountain Bicycling Association. Under Clerk of the Court, item 12, appointments. The board will now consider items nine through 12. Mr. Chair, move approval of items nine through 12. Do we have a motion? Second. And a second. Supervisor Gallardo, are you on? All right. All right. All right. Can you, oh, that's even worse. <laughs> no, I think. Can you hear me, Mr. Chairman? That's bad. Yes, I can. We are oh, voting okay. on. We are now voting on items nine through twelve. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Under county officers. County Attorney, item 13, funding from U.S. Department of Justice, Federal Bureau of Investigation. Item 14, revised MOU amendment with Arizona State University. Item 15, fleet changes. Item 16, rescind action and approve correction to the donation for victim compensation program. Under school superintendent, item 17, budget adjustment. The board will now consider items 13 through 17. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of items 13 through 17. Wow, loud and clear. We have a motion. Second. Second. Mm. Whoop. 
That was a tie. That's an absolute tie. <laughs> Your call, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Vice Chair. Oh. <laughs> 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 All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Okay, under sheriff, item 18, donations. Item 19, amend agreement with town of Qu Cave Creek. Item 20, U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement Funding. Item 21, MOU with Arizona Department of Public Safety. Item 22, Detention Service Agreement with Grand Canyon University. Item 23, Entitlement Funds from Arizona Department of Education. Item 24 has been withdrawn. Item 25, under Justice Courts, appointment and reappointment of Justices of the Peace Pro Tem. Mr. Chairman, a quick question. Um, just, and maybe I've got a, a wrong uh, thing up here, but 19 uh, on my on my paper trail here says amendment to agreement with town of Queen Creek, but on the board it says Cave Creek, and you just said Cave Creek. I just want to make sure that we're uh, we're perfect here. So uh, just a question to one. Queen Creek. It is it is Queen Creek. It is Queen Creek. Yes, sorry for the yeah, um, did typo I say it there. Wrong? No, you said, but on the, the board slide. it says Cave Creek. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you you read it correctly, but okay. Just with that, with that ch change to our digital agenda to match with our paper okay. agenda. Okay. The board will now consider items 18 through 23 and item 25. Move to approve items 18 through 23 and item number 25, Mr. Chairman. We have a motion. Second. And a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Under county management, assistant county manager Leanne Bone, item 26, Maricopa County Workforce Development Board budget amendment. Item 27, American Rescue Plan Act expenditure approval. The board will now consider items 26 and 27. Motion to approve items 26 and 27 with a brief comment. Second, Mr. Chairman. We have a motion and a second. Vice Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Item 26 here um, deals with our workforce development uh, efforts here in Maricopa County, actually increasing the budget for our local uh, board uh, by 86,000, up to 847,000. Really pleased to see this. I mean, I don't care what group, what meeting you go to these days, everybody's talking about workforce development and our labor needs and highly uh, trained, you know, well-trained uh, workforce. So um, just really grateful to Leanne and everyone uh, on her team working on this and our local workforce development board. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Bill. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. <laughs> Under county offices, animal care and control, item 28, kennel permit renewal for Chapman Kennels, item 29, new hope agreement with canines for Warriors, Inc., item 30, donations, item 31, waiver to donation policy A2508, item 32, ASPCA transport program grant carryover and budget adjustment. The board will now consider items 28 through 32. Motion to approve with another comment. Second, Mr. Chairman. We have a motion and a second. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, really excited to see item 29. This is New Hope Agreement with Canines for Warriors. And uh, we had the chance to meet with these folks who are actually out of Florida doing some great work. I mean, uh, you know, with our, our warriors coming back from serving abroad and uh, they are working, you know, with rescue um, animals across the country and they're very interested in getting more and more engaged in Maricopa County and just thrilled about this partnership. So I want to thank Animal Care and Control for working with them and look forward to even more with them here in the future. Okay, thank you, uh, Vice Chair Gates. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. 
under elections. Item 33, precinct committeemen. The board will now consider item 33. Move to approve item number 33, Mr. Chairman. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Motion carries with a majority. Under elections, continued. Item 34, appropriation adjustment for grant funding from Arizona Department of Homeland Security. Under finance, item 35, funds, transfers, warrants. Item 36, market adjustments. Under human resources, item 37, market ranges. The board will now consider items 34 through 37. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of items 34 through 37. Second, Mr. Chairman. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Under medical examiner, item 38, Conrad 30 physician employment agreement under procurement services, item 39, West Quartz hot water boilers replacement, item 40, consolidated justice courts, item 41, real estate acquisition, relocation, disposition, and other related services, item 42, legislative service providers. The board will now consider items 38 through 42. Move to approve items 38 through 42, Mr. Chairman. We have a motion. Second. And a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Under public health, item 43, gift cards for tuberculosis, tuberculosis control incentive program. Items 44 through 51, amend IGAs with City of Tempe, City of Peoria, City of Mesa, City of Phoenix, City of Buckeye, Arizona Fire and Medical, Town of Queen Creek, City of Tolleson. Item 52, contract with unlimited potential. Item 53, purchase order for IGAs with ADHS. The board will now consider items 43 through 53. Move to approve items 43 through 53, Mr. Chairman. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. <clears throat> Under transportation, item 54, Bentley Software License Agreement Renewal. Item 55, Amend contract with AZ Tech Engineering. Item 56, amend IGA with Arizona State University. Items 57 through 59, IGAs with Town of Florence, City of Apache Junction, and City of Phoenix. Item 60, regional archive data system upgrades and data management program. Item 61, Road abandonment, road file number AB-335. Item 62, easement right of way and relocation assistance documents. The board will now consider items 54 through 62. Mr. Chairman, move uh, 54 through 62 with a comment on 55 when available. We have a motion. Second. And a second. Um, I, yeah, I would just like to uh, thank once again the city of, of Peoria, and I, I thank this board and McDot for how hard they're working uh, when it comes to this item number 55. This has been a long time coming uh, with the with the with the residents clamoring for it all the way almost through my entire term, and we are getting very close. And it's really nice to be able to talk to the city of Peoria also as, as we go along, because it's going to benefit uh, their residents, it's gonna benefit uh, the people of unincorporated area and plus um, Sun City and Sun City West to, to create what's kind of a logistical nightmare to get around that area with, that, with now a new bridge coming. So uh, thank you to the county for getting this, continually get this done. Thank you, Supervisor Hickman. All in favor, please say aye. 
Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion carries. Under setting of hearings, planning and development, item 63, planning and zoning cases. Under transportation, item 64, ordinance addressing requirements for permits to work in right-of-way within unincorporated Maricopa County. The board will now consider item 63 and 64. Move to approve item 63 and 64, Mr. Chairman. We have a motion second. and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Under consent agenda, clerk of the board, item 65, 2022 meeting schedule, item 66 through 68, cancellation of elections and appointments. Item 69 through 70, duplicate and stale dated warrants. Item 71, secured, unsecured tax rule corrections. Item 72, special taxing district canvas of elections. Item 73, tax abatements. Item 74, civil penalty appeals for approval. Item 75, revision to the limited English proficiency policy. Item 76, public defense services cost per felony case annual report. The board will now consider item 65 through 76. So moved. We have a motion. Second. And a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Under Board of Supervisors Addendum, County Attorney, Item 77, Southwest Gas Corporation versus Arizona Department of Revenue, Maricopa County et al. Item 78, Risk Trust Expenditures. The Board will now consider Item 77 through 78. Mr. Chair, I have a potential conflict on these items. Okay. Thank you. The vice chair will recuse. The board will now consider item 77 and 78. Mr. Chairman, move for approval item 77 and 78. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Welcome back. That was a short <laughs> recess. <laughs> okay, we will now recess as the Board of Supervisors and convene as the Board of Deposit. Under Board of Deposit, item 79, 2022 meeting schedule. The Board will now consider item 79. So moved. We have a motion. A second. And a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. We will now adjourn as the Board of Deposit and convene as the Improvement District Board of Directors. Under Improvement District, item 80, 2022 meeting schedule, item 81, Casitas Bonitas Sanitation Sewer Improvement District, the board will now consider items 80 and 81. Move approval. We have a motion. Second. And a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. We will now adjourn as the Improvement District Board of Directors and convene as the Flood Control District Board of Directors. Under Flood Control District, item 82, on-call construction management and inspection services. Item 83, IGA with the United States Geographical Survey. Item 84, 84 2022 meeting schedule. 85, reappointment to the Flood Control Advisory Board. Under Flood Control District amendum, um, addendum, Item 86, Settlement in the Technology Construction, Inc. 
case. The board will now consider items 82 through 86. Move to approve items 82 through 86. We have a motion second. and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Okay, a couple more hats to change into. <laughs> we will now adjourn as the Flood Control District Board of Directors and convene as the Library District Board of Directors. Under Library District, item 87, donations. Item 88, 2022 meeting schedule. The board will now consider items 87 and 88. Move to approve items 87 and 88, Mr. Chairman. We have a motion. Second. And a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. We will now adjourn as the Library District Board of Directors and convene as the Stadium Direct District Board of Directors. Under Stadium District, item 89, 2022 meeting schedule. The board will now consider item 89. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of item 89. We have a motion. Second. And a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. We will now adjourn as the Stadium Board, District Board of Directors, and reconvene as the Board of Supervisors. Madam Clerk, do we have anything to report regarding public comment email responses? Chairman, Supervisors, we received four comments regarding COVID. Those were all the comments we received for today. Thank you very much. Item 891, Supervisor Summary of Current Events. Maricopa County Manager. Nothing today, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Supervisor Gallardo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Dan, I'll make it real, real, real brief. Um, this has been a long meeting. Uh, just want to wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving. It's, 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 it's a, that time of year where we get to sit down and uh, and uh, and really uh, enjoy uh, time with family and being able to eat. I don't know about you all, but this is the one year that I actually eat turkey. You know, I don't eat turkey throughout the year, but this is the one day I actually do eat turkey. So I, I always look forward to it. But I just want to wish uh, everyone there in Maricopa County a happy Thanksgiving and uh, let's get the holiday season started. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Steve. Supervisor Hickman. Well, I'm not going to let that slight go to our nation's turkey farmers that are working hard right now <laughs> to not provide you turkey. Uh, <laughs> uh, now, just, just uh, again, I, I always I love this time of year as we as we come up um, to just what Steve said. This is a time for family and celebrating them, uh, celebrating our farmers uh, to provide food to the table, and um, just wish everybody a uh, safe time, safe travels if you're going somewhere. Thank you. Vice Chair Gates. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I did have a turkey sandwich for lunch yesterday. <laughs> um, but despite that, I'm, I'm looking forward to having turkey again uh, on Thanksgiving. And I just want to wish happy Thanksgiving in particular to all of our county employees who've been through so much uh, the last couple of years. I really do hope that they enjoy themselves, enjoy some time away from work and, and with their families. And then the other thing I just wanted to comment on is I'm really grateful. I think, as everyone knows, we have a vacancy now in District 2 here on the board. And uh, really grateful that 22 people have applied uh, to serve alongside with us on this board that tackles big issues and um, works together in a collaborative fashion. So I'm looking forward to that process and selecting our uh, new colleague here soon. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh Vice Chair Gates. And I, I also will wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving. I, I hope it goes well with you and your families. Uh, I will mention that over the past week, I, I've been really pleased that I've been able to actually start working on some of my agenda items in the transportation infrastructure area. It looks like we, we may be getting some real funding for the state of Arizona. and. Uh, I, I want to ensure that we do all the right things when we get that money uh, to benefit our county. Uh, the other thing I'll mention quickly is that uh, 
I enjoyed spending uh, some time with Recorder Richer to give a tour to a couple of our representatives at McTech yesterday. Uh, always so exciting to be able to let our elections people who are really the best of the best showcase what they do and why the process is so, so efficient and so accurate. And the, the two representatives, uh, Representative Osborne and John, were very, very impressed. They asked a lot of questions, spent a lot of time there, and I was very, very pleased to uh, be able to showcase that, that outstanding group to some more elected officials. So thank you very much, and that'll conclude our meeting.